There we go. Way. I rang my camera slightly differently so that you can kind of see the dog who likes hiding behind the microphone. Hey, boo! Look at that um, fucking dog. <laughs> and the I'd pet not... he's holding too. <laughs> oh, no. No. Uh, James, I need to start with an apology. <laughs> okay. Um, in this reality that we're recording in, uh, episode 24 just came out yesterday, I think. Yes. Uh, and um, in it, I made reference to Count Dooku being straight edge. Uh, and in an offhand comment that I hadn't written down, I don't think, or maybe I did, I can't remember. Um, I accidentally made quite an ableist joke, and I'm sorry. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. Said, Count Dooku uh, is straight edge because you can't take drugs if you don't have any hands. And I just like to say, I'm very sorry. And I, did, I listened to it back, and I was like, that's not the best thing I've ever said. There we so, go. Um, if you haven't got any hands and you do want to take drugs, I'm really sorry that I, a- I didn't mean to offend you. Accountability um, you anything... here from David Hall. Yeah. Uh, Accountability. That'll be an Edinburgh show. That's good. Account Dooku ability here <laughs> from David. I don't. I genuinely don't want to make light of any kind of ableist joke. I'm sorry. It's no, just, of course I'm not. Sorry. And I was like, let's do that. But yeah. It's just Count Dooku is really funny, and when he gets his hand sliced off, it's pretty funny. But that's also like in the Star Wars universe. Yes. Is there anything you'd like to apologise for, James? Um, oh, this feels like there's there's a <laughs> there's a trap here. And I go, no, it's fine. It's like, are you sure? And you bring the list. <laughs> These uh, documents suggest otherwise. <laughs> I I would like to apologise uh, to any royalists who have been offended. <laughs> um, and I, I would like to. I don't know. Have I? Have I? I probably. You don't have to. It's just whether you did. Well, if I've said anything that has made you feel upset, um, <laughs> then I apologise. Uh, and any. I'm sorry, any, you felt that way. Any smells <laughs> I may have made as well, um, while recording this, I, I apologise for them wholeheartedly. Yeah, that's pretty good. I don't know if I want the beginning of each show to be a. Um... <laughs> Apology section. <laughs> it's, How do you feel about that? It's also good that we we record these with a long gap in between them coming out and recording. So, uh, oh, when there we is... finally get our Patreon set up, I do have an idea of we should do show notes, which is basically us when we've listened back to the show and going, "Well, I was going to say this tangent here, but I got interrupted." Yes. Which will be what you said because I interrupt you all the time. Um, or you're like, "What was the thread here? What was the weird word you, we missed?" Like, I accidentally said Diana twice when I should have said Camilla on one episode. <laughs> and it's like, um, just, just anything. Well, just to thank clarify. God that Prince Philip didn't make that mistake and that <laughs> rainy French 1997 morning. Oh, we both had the same joke. <laughs> Is this enough? With James O'Connor Q and David Hall. Venom <laughs> couldn't stop me! What makes you think you can? And welcome to Is This Enough? The excellent and brilliant game show podcast that is both excellent and brilliant. My name is James O'Donoghue and with Woo! me, as always, is David Hoare. This is the Woo! exciting game show that is both excellent and brilliant. We've come up with three rounds each and neither of us knows what the other one has prepared. This, we- this week is World Michael Keaton's Testicles Week. David, you want to get nuts? Come on, let's get nuts and check them mm. twice a week. There mm. is all to play for this week because there is a prize for the winner and a forfeit for the loser. Last week, I won and was given 27 compliments. Mm. What was your favourite compliment you received? Uh, nice head, big head. Oh, no, I don't think that was a compliment at all. Um, whereas you David, you lost really and- good fellatio because of the size of your cranium. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, it was from the person I was going down on currently. Uh, David, you lost and you had to, uh, you had 27 days of incontinence. How was that for you? Gushing. <laughs> uh, the prizes for this week very exciting because they are introduced by a very special guest. I'm going to usher them. On screen now, 
uh, mm. which means you must uh, bear with me a second. Oh, I'm off. But uh, here to uh, introduce the prizes is uh, Robert Walpole. Hello, boys. <laughs> I am Robert Walpole. The first Prime Minister and advisor to King George, no less. The prizes are, if you win, you get an immense feeling of fulfilment. And mm -hmm. if you lose, you get a dip in the Thames. Oh no! I'll see you later. See you on the funny pages. Bye-bye! Oh. So, there we are. The stakes in a way, have never been higher. But David, before we crack on, do you think that there's a possibility that this may in fact be enough? Um, I'd like to find out together with you, James. Then let's find out and carry on with the show as we go over to you for round one. Round one, it's over to you. Round one. James, round one is called Sean Penrill Knowledge. I'm not succumbing. I'm not succumbing to to the syndrome. I'm not enjoying this. This is an audio medium for some people, but it's good to watch the video episode there because James got so frustrated they turned into that uh, weird creature from Pan's Labyrinth with the hands for eyes. <laughs> <laughs> that's good Maybe David that's I want to have a sensible up. podcast in which the first Prime Minister of recorded history can give us some prizes what a cape that first Prime Minister had uh, James uh, there are many Sean's in the world but one thing they all Ooh. have in common is their love of writing I'm going to tell you a famous Sean and all you have to do is tell me their preferred pen it's oh. Sean Penrill knowledge <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay all right uh, this is for 500 points of question, because when I googled the word pen, uh, the second <laughs> pen that Google suggested to me was £500 mm. for a pen. Does it do your laundry? Yes. Can it make toast? You can bathe in it. That's why they call it a fountain pen. Lads, 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 lads. Uh, James, I'm going to list you some Sean's. Tell me their preferred Pen for 500 points a question. Question number one. What do you think the preferred pen is of Sean Astin? Remind me Sean Astin again. Samwise Ganji, dude from Goonies. Oh, the dude, I... the dude in the second series of Stranger Things where you're like, oh, he's going to die. They're definitely going to kill him off. And then they do. Spoilies, but it's really obvious. I can imagine that he, he would buy a 500 pound pen. Oh... Expensive pen. I think he's an expensive pen kind of guy. He seems like he's he's very well prepped for anything. Check out anyone that turned to Sean Penn and gone, expensive pen, Sean Penn. The name's expensive pen. Oh, no, I can't do it. It's like a James Bond joke. M We're both <laughs> on form today. <laughs> this is great. Uh, I'm sorry, James. The correct answer is felt tip. Uh, ah, question okay. number two. Sean Young. What, who, what is Sean Young's favourite Pen. Sean Young being Rachel from Blade Runner. Sean Young. She... One of my favourite facts about Blade Runner is that the two leading actresses, actors, two leading female actors in Blade Runner in 1982 were called Sean and Daryl. Which yes. is real like lads down the pub sort of name. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Sean and Daryl. Right. <laughs> Sean uh, Young and Daryl. They're, they're on a group chat called like hey! uh! <laughs> Friday beers with the boys uh, I can imagine Sean Young um, she was going to be in a Batman film and seriously damaged her spine and then uh, campaigned for the role of Catwoman to the extent of uh, wearing a Catwoman outfit and walking into uh, uh, Tim Burton's office and I think she might have held him hostage a little bit uh, and therefore, um, is that why I... Kanye West got the idea to get his rec recording contract? Because that's what he did to get his first recording contract to be a rapper. Because he was just making beats, and he just went into the offices of the record company and just rapped at them until they gave them a record company. It turns out that he was mentally unwell the whole time. Well, um... <laughs> I think I think she would have like a dip pen. 
Oh. I'm sorry, James. The correct answer is fountain pen. The fountain in question being Trafalgar Square. Question <laughs> number three. <laughs> Sean Bean. Everyone's favourite Sean Bean. Sean Bean. Or Sean as it's correctly Bean. pronounced, Sean Bajon. Sean Bean would have um, a very chunky marker, like a ridiculously chunky marker. Just as the defence against dying. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, James. The correct answer is a gel pen scented with vinegar. <laughs> oh. Yeah. What an odd picking there for a pen, Sean Penn. Uh, question number four, Sean Connery. Um, some sort of exploding pen. <laughs> is that your final answer? Yes. I'm sorry. Dip pen is the correct answer this time. Oh we no. Dip is hummus uh, and finally sean the sheep uh he would have no pen at all he's a sheep and made of clay oh you've been reeling ulysses haven't you yes you got to the part where somebody's asked what a nation is oh probably the book when there's like a nation is a collection of people in a country and also outside of a country very profound. And then you're like, Sean, Sean the sheep is a sheep, but also made of clay. <laughs> you're the new, uh, who wrote Ulysses? James O'Donoghue. <laughs> well, uh, no, uh, the correct answer is Byro. So at the end of that, oh. uh, have absolutely zero Sean Pendle knowledge there, James. I think you should be ashamed of yourself. It's over to you for round two. Round two. David, round two is called Whose Lyme's Disease Is It Anyway? <laughs> your tip and leeches now. No, of course, that was a fake round. Uh, round two is called Are These Real X-Men? Uh, David, thanks to the animated series X-Men 97 and Marvel Studios having no fucking clue how to fold them into the cinematic universe, the X-Men are currently quite trendy. Thing is, comics are dumb. For big fucking nerds. I like him, sure I do. I love Grant Morrison's mad run on the X-Men. And I think that there are some of the films are kind of neat. So much so that I'm currently heartbroken because my recent pitch for an X-Men musical was just turned down. Here's a clip from uh, the musical, if it was made. You're a fool, Charles. You'll never think your way out of this one. I don't need to think when I can sing. We are the X-Men now, we are the X-Men here, we are a metaphor for gayness. Gayness! <laughs> there we go. <laughs> How that didn't get picked up, I will never know. Uh, so, here are some X-Men characters, heroes, villains and mutants. You need to tell me, are these real X-Men or have I made them up for, I don't know, social clout maybe? <laughs> Uh, fuck it, let's say that. So, all of these are worth 6,000 points. Uh, mm. Double if you can tell me their powers. Ooh, so there is all to play for. Uh, David, are you an X man? Uh, 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 no apology at the start of next episode for David. Well, I thought of a uh, a very offensive round, which was X Men, which is you know fill in the blanks from there. Which is I'm never obviously going to do that, but yeah, bad, 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 bad. Let's keep you it write down right. every idea. Yes, you write down every idea and then only announce the good ones to the world. Sometimes, David, um, my wife, I, you I, my wife. <laughs> Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, oh, we have to get merch at some point. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, so um, I watched the cartoon when I was younger, but mainly because I loved the um, the thing, which is sick. As previously mentioned. And then the TV show uh, confused me because he's beast, but he's knowledgeable. And I liked Wolverine, and I found the laser eye guy a bit confusing because I just thought... That sounds like a really impractical way to live your life. You're just permanently producing lasers out of your eyes. He's born with genetic mutation. That's a weird choice for you to make, mate. 
Yeah, in the same way that I can never watch Home Alone because I just feel like the kid's been abandoned and I can't get into the hijinks of the fun because I'm just too f- focused on the idea that this kid's been abandoned by his parents. When I was five, I was watching X Men, being like, "That's uh, how you can't be having glazes at your eyes all day long. That's going to be really difficult." Um, uh, I never watched any of the films because I have an aversion to Hugh Jackman that I can't quite explain. Oh, but just some, you know, there's certain actors. Uh, that you're like, I just, I don't, yeah, you done anything he, particularly wrong. I just, I can't, I don't know why. I just he's can't. He's got one of them faces. Yeah. And I was quite excited to watch the X Men film and then I just never got around to it. And then I saw a bit of it and I was just like, I just find this quite annoying. I, I have a similar thing with Bradley Cooper. I can understand it with Bradley Cooper. I think I have seen some Bradley Cooper stuff I liked, but not. Loads. Him as a, I have as a quite few. Things. Leonardo DiCaprio, unless it's Titanic. Um, it's just just one of those things where sometimes you just don't get on well with somebody's just general being, and not in a hateful way. It's just like you just like I'm just not. I just not asked. Uh, you are but listening I'm, to guys hating dudes. The podcast. <laughs> this is the most white man bit of this podcast we've ever done. Um. Uh, I could fight a cheetah. So, um, <laughs> uh, I really am enjoying X Men '97 a lot. Uh, I yeah. need to watch episode five. I haven't it's watched that yet. I'm, pretty good. How, how far through are you? Uh, I think three episodes in now. It's good. Yeah. Good stuff. It is the it is the gayest show out there, as is right and proper. Hooray! Uh, Get me with your questions. So, are these real X Men? Uh, if you could tell me their powers, if they are real, then you get an Double. extra 6,000 points. Mm. Beak. Oh. Is he a name, real? It's the name of a side project for Porter's Head. Was it? Jeff Arrow's side project. Yeah, still is. Um, as he described it, uh, it was supposed to be a bit of fun, and now it's work. No. Uh, <laughs> You're listening to Is the <laughs> Um is Beak. Uh I don't think Beak is. Uh I'm sorry, David. He is an X Man. His mutant mm. power is that he is a chicken. He's a giant <laughs> chicken man. Uh question number two. <laughs> Wankstain. <laughs> from the 80s run in uh drawn by Rob Liefeld. Is that a real guy? Wankstain. And if Wankstain. they were, what would their powers be? Um now, are they called Wankstain because they produce the stains, or are they called Wankstain because they're good at cleaning up the stains? Well, it's it's so also... maybe they can shoot like Mr. Muscle out of their hands in the same you, way that you've got uh, to remember that it, this would have been probably made by an American. Do they not have Mr. Uh, Muscle in America? They they do. They don't have uh, the word. They wank. call him Arnold Schwarzenegger. Um, <laughs> uh, what? Yeah. Sorry. What's the? What were you going to say? They, they don't, don't have, have the. W- they don't use the word wank out there. That's true. Which is a shame. I know. I, I think they could pull it off. Do. Uh, I don't think Wank Stain is a. X Men. That is correct, David. Well done. You've got Hooray! yourself 6,000 points. Uh, question number three. Glob Herman. Yeah, for sure. And that is uh, somebody who can produce like very thick, viscous uh, liquid. Uh, I'm going to give you the points for... That is correct. That is a, a real guy. His power is that he has translucent skin and he's very flammable. Uh, oh. Kaiser Wilhelm. Oh. Is he a mutant? I know that name. Yes? No. No, no David. He was the uh. villain of the story arc of World War I. Uh, <laughs> gold balls. Um... Yes, and uh, it's Jasper Carrot is the actual <laughs> mutant, and he's got the ability to convince people to share their wealth. Ah, oh, David, you know what? I enjoyed that answer so much. I'll give you the full amount of points for it. Gold Balls is a real guy, 
and he can produce golden balls. Really? Yes. What era? Uh, I think, like, fairly recently. Mm. Uh, and uh, Justin Lee Collins. <laughs> No. No. Uh, David, unfortunately, I can't give you that. He is a mutant and his power is disappearing. David, at the end of that round, you are in the lead with a whopping 24,000 points. I'm a little bit behind with nothing at all. It feels like I've earned nothing at all. Nothing at all. <laughs> nothing at all. So, with all Stupid of that... Stupid sexy O'Donoghue. <laughs> that's is the end of round two and as is the laws of mathematics we now turn to round three james i don't know if you think you've earned this but you've definitely earned a little bit of seamless podcasting there well done yes hooray uh james uh round three um is called glandral knowledge i'm gonna just whoa pick- and you just have to tell me which body part it is. <laughs> no, that's a, a fake one. James, round three is called How Are You, James? James? Uh, How are you, James? Well, David, uh, for those of you listening at home, me and David recorded the uh, last episode yesterday. Mm. So uh, we don't have a week's worth of catching up. What I will say is I am hung over as shit. Yeah, this you is a... did something. <laughs> This is a I bad just say, one. The video thing, uh, viewers, whilst I uh, were well, you saying that, I lifted up my glasses and I've my glasses are quite tight on my face and I've, I've got like a little like hammock between my eyebrows. A skin hammock there for all you viewers at home. Um, skin, I, hammock <laughs> skin hammock was one of the big four. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Skin hammock. It was in the Beatles. So you lifting Paul, up your head there Ringo, with the tire- skin hammock. <laughs> you lifting up your head there was the tiredest you've looked all record so far. You went. I, Tell me about your night out, James. Fucking sick. Have you ever just looked down? It's great. I uh, went to a pub. Uh... No more questions, Your Honour. Who with whom? With uh, some old mates from back home. Um, How old are they? They are ancient. <laughs> it's just two trees. Two old trees. And I found them and I asked their wisdom. And they replenished me with alcohol. Um, I, uh, yeah, went and saw them. And I know that on the on the bus home, it's a long old bus journey, about an hour. I was probably a bit of a, a, bit of a nightmare. Uh, you were. I... I probably was, because here's the thing. Oh, no. I decided to have a bit of a, a sing-song to myself. <laughs> Were you on your own? Yeah. Were there yeah. other people there? Yes. What were you singing? I can't remember. I uh, think it was uh, a New England, but the cover by Kirsty McCall. <laughs> <laughs> and unfortunately, the reason there was the disturbance wasn't actually... The singing. It was just the fact that all the dads on the bus were going, she died in a speedboat, you know. <laughs> and they just wouldn't stop saying. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, right. The main question I have is, what did you drink? What kind of drunk were you as a result of this? And what kind of hangover have you got? What did you drink? I drank six pints of beer. I oh, Lager beer? or uh... La- uh, Of uh, uh, like... IPA, like punk IPA, because I'm a fucking punk going to Zone yeah. 7. Um, and then uh, I hadn't eaten properly beforehand as well. So uh, I was the kind of drunk where uh, I came home, my uh, wonderful girlfriend uh, got me some water and uh, went to bed. And I was going to go to follow her, go to bed. I slept on the sofa woke up uh, and at some point I had been given a bucket uh, to catch you know? you to catch that? any any you droppings drop? uh, and I did not get sicky I did however get very spitty 
Uh, and yeah. I have I mean, the, the... there. You're going to use it. Did you have any food? Did you have to go like kebab shop or anything? I got chips. Got some chippy chips. Okay. And then uh, I, chip, I got some chippy chips. I got a uh, cheap ketchup all over my trousers. I hope it was ketchup. And uh, woke up and had uh, an hour where I couldn't be vertical. Horizontal only. Okay. Yeah, that's fair. Because I, I, f- I feel like uh, hangovers are like warm air. They rise. And while what you're... time did you wake up on the sofa? I woke up at half six. I so you slept six. through on the sofa, basically. Slept through on the sofa. Yeah. I did that at uni where like one of our flatmates got a beanbag. And I remember us coming back from this night out and I was quite drunk and we all like were chatting in the living room and then I woke up and it was like five in the morning and I just like slept for like several hours just on a beanbag. <laughs> like this is not it just feels weird when you then got like drag yourself up to like your actual bedroom when you've been slept somewhere else and you're like this is not conducive to anything good. But yeah sorry you were saying hangovers sort of Rise, did you say? Yeah, hangovers rise. Uh, you need to be a, as as low altitude as possible. Uh, and it's been the kind of like it gets better, and then it and then it plateaus, and you just Do oh, you I have... guess I'm I'm this for the rest of the day now. Do you have strong hangover tactics? Um, my hangover tactics are to eat as much as possible. Mm. But I ran out of bread. Are you? I wasn't very good at. I don't particularly get many hangovers anymore. Oh, I'm made of real manliness. No, because uh, I've basically cut out most drinking. When I do oh. it, I will really know about it. But I used to be quite tactical with my hangovers. I used to really like hangover days. This is my problem. Was that because uh, yeah. when you like, ha- like, no, nah, no, nah. like eight of you like hanging out like people stay over after a party or what have you or something and then you'll wake up and you'll get to hang out until like the mid-afternoon playing video games and stuff and everyone's just a bit more kind of base level quiet you actually you talk like absolute horseshit nonsense which is my favorite and it's usually when everyone's a bit tired and you can put on something and watch it with people without like that the first time i saw the day today i was hungover that's good that's a good way to see it We'll just put on their day to day and then you watch it. And I spent the first two episodes being like, How much of this? Like, in the same way, we look around you, but like, How much of this is real? This just feels yeah. real. Um, but I can't, I can't eat anything that isn't really fried food. I can't eat healthy food, really, when I'm mm. hungover. Even the, the best thing for a hangover is like a big salad, but there's just there's something in your brain that blocks that. The can't hangover. get it down. The hangover wants you to to be hungover. It it takes a, it takes over like a like a symbiote in a Spider Man <laughs> comic. Yes, like, one game. I yeah, I yeah. have um, sensitivity issues when I'm like perfectly functioning and sober, so I struggle to eat things that are like got weird textures, even when I'm not impeded by my body being like, oh, I might throw up. Mm. So add a thing, adding anything else into the mix, and you're like, oh, Jesus. I think, though, that being said, I, I want, you know, fried stuff and I could like potato waffles and all of that. I reckon I could absolutely, right now, eat an entire cucumber. I think that's manageable. That's manageable. And it's also cucumbers are like, they've got a texture that I like. Mm-hmm. They've, uh, they're full of water. Mm-hmm. Uh, they they're healthy, but it's got a satisfying like you can just get the fucking thing down you. So yeah, well they have a bit of crunch to them, and yeah. then they've got the like wet bit. It's kind of got its own sort of sauce, you know. <laughs> it does. It's got all the bits. There we go. Well, James, because you like shoving cucumbers in yourself. Uh... Ooh! It's 1970s homophobic jokes with David Hall. <laughs> Why is that homophobic? <laughs> I'm not going to make another apology, am I? 
<laughs> it could be any uh, sexual persuasion and enjoy shoving cucumbers in yourself. It's pro-pegging material with David Hoare. I would like to say, when it comes to pegging, I don't have a stance. Do, 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 <laughs> I, do, do. I don't know if you've noticed this, but when, when we started doing comedy, there was like a standard like open mic joke, which would be like, mm-hmm. I was talking to this girl, and she said like, hey, uh, I want to try anal. And I was like, oh, yeah, let's give it a go. And then uh, she turned around, and she was wearing a strap on, and I went, oh, no. Mm-hmm. Uh, and that used to be like the standard joke, and you get like rugby lads laughing. These yeah. days, the the joke is like, uh, we're with this bird. She said, do you want to try anal? And I said, yeah. She turned around with a strap on. And I went, hey, yes, lads. Uh, there has been a seismic once in a generation shift on the topic of pegging. Uh, and uh, good for everyone. James are going to give you 8,000 points because Way! of reasons that are slightly beyond myself. Uh, James, with all of that said and done, it's over to you for round four. Round four. David, how are you going to fit this cucumber in your rectum? <laughs> we got to round what? I just said put it in you. You could be your mouth, your eyes, your ears. God! He stole fucking the cucumber, Ma. Why is it fucking? You're just putting it in. Uh, we're going to try this out. one again. Round four. David, round four is how are you going to justify your ridiculous stance on cucumbers and their place in erotica? Did you ever gig with... There was a guy... <laughs> Never part, of, part of his set was <laughs> sorry. I gigged with him with uh, with Greg a few times, and he would book him to I think annoy me. Um, he, part of his set was he would bring out a, a big shopping wheelie trolley, and it was full of like phallic shaped vegetables, like carrots and. Uh, parsnips and cucumbers and you'd go, what's that? It's a vegan dildo. And they do that same joke five times and then you bring out purple items uh, such as bin bags. It goes, you know what these are? These are Prince's bin bags. Purple bags! Purple bags! And you continue to sing the entire chorus of Purple Rain. Then you bring out another purple item and you go, what's this? It's Prince's umbrella. Purple umbrella. It was. I I know, I know that story, but I can't remember if I saw it or if you explained it to me. I think that we might have been at a gig like that together. It was uh, the the rope walk in uh, uh, with in, the in... rope walk. If I was doing it, I was usually doubling up with this next act, so I would usually go on first and then leave and then speak to people weeks later who would be like who would I would introduce myself to them and they'd be like we met at the rope walk because I would pretty much go on and then leave and I you knew like, that that fucking guy was there with his bags I don't David- know if that was you trying to explain it to me though because there's so also there was the thing with acts like that is they can sort of appear for like three months and then disappear and I have a sneaking suspicion that that may have been in the little AWOL section of 2019 that I went on where I sort of came back to comedy and there were people there who were like been gigging for like five or six months who I'd never met. Mm. And they were like, hey, how are you? How many gigs have you done? And I'm like, 200? But I'd been away for a bit. So they were just like, yeah. who the fuck are you? Know, oh, welcome to the comedy scene. And I'm like... Because <laughs> <laughs> that's how I acted back then. Was a bell-end then? Still a bell-end now. Um, what's yeah. the question? <laughs> uh, David, how are you going to feel no! when that act comes in? He's queued up in the waiting room. Cucumbered <laughs> up. Um... <laughs> David, how are you? 
Uh, pretty good, thank you very much. I'm enjoying myself doing this. As James said, we recorded the previous episode yesterday. Uh, what I do want to talk about is um, I had have had quite a lot on, as previously mentioned, and it got to the point on Saturday where uh, so I'd done for those of you who don't know a bunch of previews, a bunch of travelling to and from like Devon and Cornwall, London. Uh, I've seen James O'Donoghue Ooh. twice quite exhausting lots of gigging podcast content making i saw somebody was like how are you and i said tired and they went why and i listed all the things and they were like oh look at you working and i was like oh yeah that's nice still means i'm tired yeah so on sunday i had a bath and then relax like to relax but like my brain was still whirring and still going so um the only way i could find to like clear my brain was uh get on ableton and start making some music uh, not comedy music, just beats and stuff. And um, it works so much. And I kind of haven't valued how much. Uh, if you imagine that I do lots of work and I have ADHD, my brain can go like a million miles a second quite a lot, trying to like coordinate everything in my brain. And it's very interesting to me that sitting in front of my computer and making music on there, for what I initially think will be 20 minutes, but can often turn into like five hours, could really just quiet my brain down like completely. And it's really amazing. And then you sometimes end up with something that you're like, oh, that's, that's actually pretty good. And then you send it to someone and they can tell you otherwise. But do you have a activity that like isn't necessarily like quote unquote like relaxing I guess you do painting right I do like... I don't do painting as much as I used to I really did a lot of it during lockdown uh, mm. uh, while well, gigs disappeared uh, I think a, a, a non-productive creative thing is a good thing to do mm. it's also like it matters less uh, yeah. means that meaning that you end up not being scared of it and you end up mm. having a good time, then you end up better at it. Um, yeah, for sure. Giving where, it no weight, but just trying to make it as fun as possible and as yeah. good as possible. And be like, well, what happens if I try this? Rather than like, well, I need to get this ready for X, Y, or Z, and it needs to be of this quality and everything. And that's actually what I try and then bring into my actual like comedy writing is that kind of, you bring mm. down the level of importance like Neil Gaiman says that a lot of his writing practices are there to trivialize what he's doing in order to make it easier to mm. do, basically. The um, stakes have never been lower. Yeah. Um, but I just think I just think it's really fascinating how much you can pull yourself into something that doesn't really have that much of a consequence. And it can just zone you out and therefore like even though i was actually being fairly active i felt quite rested afterwards um so yeah so uh make music with cucumbers that's how i am oh <laughs> well david because you've been making music i'm gonna make you a millionaire you get one million points yep. very nice well david with a million points in the account there. It's over to you for round five. Round five! Yes! Round five! Round five! Round five! Round five! Round five! Round five! James, <laughs> round five is called Cause and effect. <laughs> James, I have recorded some audio through different effects, and all you have to do is tell me what effect is being used. Uh, this is for 75,000 points, because Kurt Cobain's Boss Distortion DS1 sold for 75,000 pounds. Quite a lot of money, right? That's, that's his guitar. It's quite, quite a pretty uh, his, I think his acoustic guitar that he used on Nirvana Unplugged, MTV Unplugged, is possibly the most expensive guitar that's ever been sold for as well. Ooh. So, uh, I was about to tell you a story about how somebody I know collected paintings by a certain painter whilst he was alive, knowing that when he died, uh, it, it would skyrocket in price. 
Uh, but then uh, if I just told you who that painter was, you'd be like, oh, that went wrong. Uh, let's just say Operation Yew Tree was a success. Oh, Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> I think the worst thing about Hitler was the like, like, Please don't fuck my wife. Uh, James, are you aware of effects? Um, David, let's just say that I find oh. them quite affecting. All right. Question number one Which effect is this? I said maybe. Uh, the Wurzstrang Dunst effect, as spearheaded by Bertolt Brecht. Um, I have included some clues in the, uh, what I've said in order to help you. Is you it Oasis? It I said maybe. What effects are there? What could it be? It's a reverb. A reverb, Oasis, Wonderwall. Which part of the song is that? Chorus. Correct, James. That's 75,000 oh. points. Correct. Ooh. Question number two, James. Which effect is this? Again, has, shall, measure, like, walk, grow, become, satisfy. That is reverb. Correct, James. That's another <laughs> 75,000 points for you there. <laughs> You're well good at effects. Uh, I like the fact that I've just kiboshed all your silly jokes to get the actual ones. <laughs> really going against the grain of this show. <laughs> Question number three, James. Which effect is this? What are you doing to my anus? That is the cucumber effect. <laughs> ha ha ha! <laughs> It would be interesting if I managed to record that live after the riff. What are you doing to my anus? Okay. What, what could that be? Oh, hold on. Ana analog? No. Ana uh, it's What are you doing to my anus? Not analysis, not, an, not analyze, analog, <laughs> anabolic, really steroids, and yeah, Taylor Joy, and uh, ah, <laughs> uh, seventy-five. Can you help me? Time. No. Oh. The, the audio listener there, James just picked up his um, focus right interface thing to plug the mic into to play. To... Uh, James, unfortunately for you, that was ring modulation. Ah. So no points for you there. There's one more. One more. For you here. Question okay. number four. Hello, my name is Dr. Hall, and I will be your gynecologist for today. Excuse me, that was a long burp. Um, Hello, my name is Dr. Hall, and I will be your gynecologist for today. It's been quite a burpy podcast. Hello, my name is Dr. Hall, and I will be your gynecologist for today. I know the word. I know the word. This is going to haunt me until I die. Um, Maybe. Think out loud. It's fine. You can think out loud. James it's... often doesn't want to share their answers with me because they don't want to get it wrong, but I think you could think out loud. Hello, my name is it's, Dr. Uh, Hall, and I will be your gynecologist for today. It's oscillating. Some gonna... There's going to be some sort of vagina joke in it. Vag... Vacillation. Vacillation. Vacil... You think I've just put some Vagicil on the tape? Yes. Is that your final answer? Made it all over the mic. Hello, that's my, my final Hall, answer, David. I will be your gynecologist for today. No, it was Flanger. 
Oh, no. So at the end of that, James, you have uh, an amazing 158,000 points. It's Ooh. over to you. Do, 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 Round six. David, as is customary, I'm off. Uh, but don't fear, because round six is not being presented by me. It's being presented by a uh, very, honestly, very excited to bring this person in. So uh, I'm off to uh, to go cry about it. See you in the funny pages. Who could it be? How about hey now? <laughs> Hello, David. It's me, Tom Waits. I just thought I'd swing by and check you guys out. I'm here in the UK to collaborate with Brian Eno on some new work. You want to hear a sample? I'd love to, yes. Music makes the people come together. Yeah. I think it's going to uh, be a, a bit of a barnstormer. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> I said to him, uh, Brian, you know the new sound you've been looking for? Well, listen to this. And I sent him a three-hour-long recording of two coyotes eating each other out. David, <laughs> it's been a long and storied career, so I thought I'd check to see how well you've been keeping track with me. Mm. Here are some lyrics. I need you to tell me if they're mine or not. A correct answer is worth 700 points. Mm. If these are real songs and you can uh, tell me what song they're from, I'll make it double. <gasps> That's so exciting. In a Hong Kong drizzle and Cuban heels, I rolled down the gutter to the blood bank. And I'd left my papers at the Triconderaga, and I was in a bad need of a shave. It could be a film noir. Eh, mm. eh, yes, I think that is. That sounds like lyrics of yours, Tom. Uh, Any think... guesses is too strong. Is it called like Swordfish Pinata or something? It's from the album Swordfish Trombones. Oh, okay. I'm gonna I'll give you the whole thing. Why not? Yeah. David, that was of course Shore Leave from Swordfish yes. Trombones. Of course. What about this next one? I'm home and I'm blind and I'm broke. What is next? Uh, that sounds like, uh, is it my left foot? Is I don't think that is lyrics of yours, Tom. Ah, oh, David, unfortunately, that is lyrics from mine. That's from Hell Broke Loose. Next one, David. Hmm. Come with us now on a journey through time and space to the world of the mighty Boosh. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's not your lyrics, Tom. Ah, oh, David. I was actually originally cast as No Fielding's character because of my light whimsy, but unfortunately the cowards at the BBC said audiences weren't ready for that, so I can't give you the points for that one. <laughs> what about this one? When you're down on your luck and you've lost all your dreams, there's nothing like a campfire and a tin of beans! <laughs> yes? Yes, David, that is, of course, from any guesses as to what it's from. Did you write the theme tune to the Sesame Street? No, David, that's not from Sesame Street. That is from, of course, Lucky Day. And finally, David, we're the X-Men. <laughs> you said that in the same way that you might sing it to the theme tune of the Chipmunks. <laughs> we're the X-Men. X-Men. E X-Men. 
<laughs> Gambit, Logan, Cyclops, do, 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 do. Uh, oh, good, he's always messing around. <laughs> um, no, Tom, I don't think you did write the X-Men theme tune. Ah, David, I'm sorry, but this is, of course, from my new musical that I was managed to convince the uh, London theatres to put on. Here's an extract for you. We are the X-Men now. We are the X-Men now. Well, David, at the end of that round, you fought valiantly. You got yourself 21,000 points from that. So, David, I'm going to reward you with another extra thing, because I'm going to now show you my real voice. Hello, David. This is my real voice. I don't get to share this a lot. Bye-bye. Oh, mercy <laughs> me. What, what a lot of fun. What a, I can't what... believe you managed to get actual Tom Waits. I know. Thing. And We've my had voice hurts war criminals. for no other reason than that. <laughs> You've been shoving too many cucumbers while you must throw away. Um, we've had war criminals. We've had... Or criminals, people. We've had all sorts of people who are horrible as guests, and then, uh, you know, second only to Bazaruni will always be number one in my heart. But Tom Waits, what a Tom guest. Waits, what? I forgot to ask him if he could sing um, uh, "Misery Is the River of the World" for me. That was the first song I ever heard by Tom Waits. Uh... I got in my dad's car and he was like picking me up from somewhere, and he just had on Tom Waits like he wasn't thinking about anything and I just heard this be like double can climb no more he shows his tail and I was like it was around the same time that I was listening to like new metal and he was like that's a horrible <laughs> sound and then he just like played me that and I'm like Ugh, what's this horrible guttural discordant sound anyway yeah. <laughs> well David I think like it's when time when Tom Waits wore a uh, Blackwood's red cap you think it's time <laughs> It's time for the results. Ooh. <laughs> well, David, the results are in. The boffins at the lab have just come back. And the results as they are. I am in second place with uh, 158,000 points. Whereas you, runaway, runaway train over here, you have got 1 million 26,100 points. So, David, Woo! the good news is that you get a feeling of immense fulfillment, whereas I am mm. off for a dip in the Thames. Let me just yeah, double yeah. check this with our official adjudicator. That's right, James! <laughs> Into the drink you go! <laughs> harrowing. Absolutely harrowing. David! This has been Is This Enough? You can find us on all our socials at Is This Enough Pod on Insta, TikTok, and uh, X and YouTube. Uh, email us uh, with uh, any fun things you might have. At, uh, is This Enough Podcasting at gmail.com. Uh, if you want to find me online and uh, attempt to track me down and even maybe solicit a bit of murder, you can find me on Instagram <laughs> at is that James O on Insta and let the James begin on TikTok. David, if someone wants to use your services as, your, as a hitman, where can they do that? Find me in the veg aisle, everybody. Uh, at Living David his Hall. dream. <laughs> at David Hoare, LOL, on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok. And YouTube, this has been Seamless Podcasting. It's Bob Iger from me. And it's Bob Iger from me. And most importantly, it's Bob Iger from me as well, boys. Goodbye. <laughs>